Hello, and welcome to Alice Dead Blog number 16. Now, if you've been watching all the other videos, then you'll notice that there's a huge gap between, I think, what was developer diary number 11 and 16. And that's because there are no videos for any of those. Instead, those are all text only posts. And you can see those posts on fourcourse.com. And those posts are about the tower defense side project that I started. And. They go from day one, where I basically create, you know, oh, day one where I create the base game class and whatnot, and I design the first level. And day two, I create the camera. Day three, I aim with the mouse. Day four, I do a little bit of tower thing, but not much, just enough to get started on that. Day five, I was really at school the entire time. I didn't really have much time to work on, so I made a little HUD design. It's already in game. It's not implemented, so nothing is actually dynamic here yet. But I'll cover that when I do that. And then day six, which is I'm going to show off right now, which is number 16. I'm doing a video for the text version. Day 16, no, not day 16, day six of Dev Diary number 16, that's the weapon archetype system. And this system, it allows you to basically create assets in your content browser that will represent weapons instead of creating a weapon class for every weapon. In fact, if you open up my on codex here, you'll see on the left here I have one weapon class that derives from UT weapon. This project derives from the UT classes because I just don't want to spend that much time on it and I just want to get things, this done. It's more mainly a fun little side project as opposed to like a real professional thing but it's still just a lot of good knowledge here and it can be easily ported to a clean slate. With that said, uh, notice that there's only one custom weapon class here but this weapon class is going to be as the base for a an unlimited amount of weapons that you can use and we do that through archetypes and the way this class is set up if I go ahead and open up my editor I can go ahead and create a new weapon archetype by going to my custom weapon class right clicking it and going create archetype now I already have one set up for example purposes and that is a weapon that is a CR weapon on a screw mp5 a3 and what this is, is this is basically the, the settings for my mp5 weapon. Now in the properties box of this archetype, I have a few sounds for weapon firing. And I also have this huge thing here of weapon attributes. Now this lets me pick a lot, or assign a, all my weapon stuff without actually touching any code. For instance, let me collapse all these so we can go through them. Uh, bit by bit. Now, the first thing that's listed here alphabetically is fire interval. But I store my fire interval differently. I store it at seconds times 100. So 7 is actually 0 .07, I believe. Yeah, uh, fire interval. And that's just because I want to store it that way so I can render it easier to the user. And it just, to me, this makes more sense. I like dealing with uh, this unit as opposed to actual seconds. But you can store it however you want. Now, then I'll have base instant damage. Now these, this is the base damage that your weapon will do. If your weapon doesn't have any upgradable stats, then it will use this weapon, or use this damage for its attacks. Now, notice how I said upgradable stats. I'll get into the upgrades in a minute. Now, base max ammo count, not just how many bullets you can hold in your clip. Right now, there's no reload functionality or clip functionality designed yet, but that's really easy to implement. And then base weapon range, that of course is the weapon range. Now, for my level I made in day one, each tile is about 256 units wide, so I decided to make the, the base range of this weapon be four tiles wide. Then we have the mega struct of my weapon info, and this has everything you need, for the most part, for instant hit weapons so far. Uh, the first thing you see is the first person weapon mesh. I don't actually use first person weapon meshes in my game, so I haven't really tested that, because I use a third person camera, but it's there. And then we have our instant hit momentum for for two fire modes. Right now only one fire mode is actively being used but that's just because I don't have my right click set to second fire. That's, we'll get into that another day. And then the levels, that's how many levels you can upgrade your gun. Uh, basically every, the way I set it up for my game design you'll have a weapon that starts at level one and you can upgrade it to a certain amount of times. And each upgrade you get a certain amount of upgrade points and that's on this variable here upgrade points per level. So you get three points per level. So every three points, you can spend those points on weapon stats. And those stats include damage, capacity, range, rate of fire, rate, um, some other things like that. And 
that way the player can choose where to spend these upgrade points and choose how to custom how to upgrade their weapon but that upgrade logic even though it's supported and implemented now we need a UI in order to really push that a point across so we'll get into that in, a, in another day as well uh, then, then we have our muzzle flashes all you have to do is take a particle system drop it in there particles your muzzle flash is done then your shot cost is how much ammo is used per shot you know these are all the standard variables that you'd see in your in your weapon code but just variable and editor form third work third person mesh that's important we need to see your gun I also added tracer rounds for instant hit weapons if you add in a particle system that has a beam data with a target with the parameter as target end it will go ahead and set up use these tracer rounds then we have the weapon archetype name that's just the name of the archetype itself the one that we're actually editing properties for that's for replication purposes that way all the clients know which archetype to use for this type of weapon and things like that. Now, weapon fire type. You have your first, uh, these are standard weapon fire types that are built in Unreal. And my first fire mode set to instant hit. I don't have a second fire mode, so I set that to none. Weapon portrait. That is going to be what gets put on a HUD when you have your weapon selected. That's not implemented yet, but it's just there for that reason. Weapon projectiles. These are currently weapon projectiles that your gun will shoot if you're going to set to projectile fire. Now, what I plan to do with these in the future is to archetype these projectiles as well, that way they're not class based. But for now, I'm just leaving them as class based, and I'm not even using them because I'm mainly using an instant hit weapon right now. Then we have a weapon stat table. This is where a lot of power comes in. Now, with the weapon stat table, we can basically ha we have an array of weapon stats, and each weapon stat contains basically what stat it is, and I already have a few built-in stat types along with 10 custom slots for any future modders of this system. And that's damage, accuracy, range, rate of fire, capacity, area of effect, recharge rate, multi-shot, and critical chance. Now these aren't actually all implemented yet, but they're there for future implementation. But the, the basic ones, damage, accuracy, range, rate of fire, capacity, those are all already implemented. Now, you can get an upgrade cost per stat, that way you, you can spend one upgrade point to upgrade to the next level. You know, some, like damage might for one weapon might be two upgrade points while range is only one. You can do that type of thing with the system. And then with that, you create an array of values for each level. Like level one, damage will be at 15. Level two, damage will be at 30, and so on. And that's that's already implemented as well. So whatever level your weapon is in that stat, it will automatically pull from this data. And we can do that for all of these. Now, if, say if we, uh, this is for upgradable weapon stats only. If you don't want your damage upgradable, it will. You just simply uh, get rid of this array element, and you can. It will automatically use your base instant hit damage instead of using an upgradable damage stat, and that's pretty cool because that way your upgradable stats you can choose which stats your player can upgrade and things like that. And so we, I've set damage capacity range rate of fire, and this makes it so that we can also test our values in the game without recompiling. Let's go ahead and loader map and I've already given an mp5 to our player when he spawns so if you zoom in can't see that mp5 he's holding there and if you go ahead and left click he, he, go, he goes ahead and kills stuff you run out of ammo pretty quickly this mp5 shoots at shoots 800 rounds a minute you only get 30 shots in mp5 clips so for testing purposes I'm gonna go ahead and give myself unlimited ammo with the all ammo command and now I can shoot this thing forever now it's already firing on the, the weapon sounds. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm gonna put my headphones on the mic. So that's working. Now I can go around and run around and notice that if I aim too far, the uh, the weapon range gets cut, and that's about if I rotate the camera, you can see it's about four tiles of range I got going on. So that's kind of cool. And right now I'm doing 15 damage, and these crowd actors have 20 health, so I have to f shoot these guys twice before them to die. And so that's pretty cool. And you can see my muzzle flash is already being used too. So that's really cool. Now let's just say I wanted to basically make my damage much, much more higher. Instead of changing our damage variable and, re and recompiling your code and reloading the editor, I'm going to go ahead and change my level 1 damage stat to 100 and hit play an editor. And now these guys will die in one hit. So I can go ahead and shoot this guy 
and he's already dead. And they'll die much faster. And gotta give myself a little bit of ammo again. Boom. And now this MP5 is just a massive gun of destruction. Now say if I wanted to really weaken it, I can just go ahead and say this weapon does one damage at its first level. And I just want to take 15 shots for one of these guys to die. See, there we go, half a clip goes into one guy for it to die. And I, that's not, you don't have to restart anything. And you can just save this archetype and it'll store these settings. Now say if we deleted this damage stat altogether. And now I just delete that out of the array, and now there's no more damage stat. So let's go ahead and play. Now, because our base damage is set to 15, it still takes two hits to kill these guys. So that's cool. That's already handled automatically. And that, because so if you have no damage stat here, it'll automatically pull from your base instant hit damage property in your archetype. And that applies for all these other built in ones too, like range. Right now my range is set to 1024. I'm going to change it to 50,000. Why not? And now if I zoom out all the way, I can run with my little guy I can barely see. I'm going to run all the way down here and I'm going to shoot across the map and my tracer will go all the way over there. Which is kind of really hard to see from this distance. But I am killing a bunch of people from that far, so if I just run over here, you can see all the dead bodies just laying around here. So that's really cool. And once again, if I delete the, the range element of this, it will automatically pull from my base data, which is 1024 again. So if I load this back up, I can go ahead and shoot, and my, you can see my tracer is now limited. This also works through the uh, remote control panel at runtime, so that's pretty cool. And this video is already getting pretty long, so I'm going to hit and end this here. So that's you know, that's the basic weapon archetype system. You just go ahead and create an archetype, give it some values, boom, it's already ready to go for you to add to your player. And right now, adding is not through code, but you know, the next few days, I should have a UI that allows you to buy weapons for your character. And hopefully, I can apply this archetype system to our tower system. That way, you can make towers in the asset editor instead of going to code every time I want to create a new tower. So that's going to be really cool. So hopefully uh, we'll see some really cool things happen in the next few days now that the space system is done. And uh, I'll post videos and I'll have a... Uh, I've already detailed how to do this. All the steps on how to do this and code samples are already on my website regarding this. So go ahead and uh, click the link in... The, if you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description bar that takes you to my webpage that you can see this video along with all the documentation about that and all the other steps to how I built this demo as it is already so that's pretty cool so yeah see you next time